Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host and disembodied hands, Quindy, Justin, John, and oh no, we're receiving Kiki. Hey, Kiki receiving. Kiki! Oh, I'm up! A girl and a Kiki! Yay! <laughs> Good girl! Good girl, yeah, good girl, yeah, good girl. Much less Toofy. I think she grew another adult brain cell. Hi there, face. Yeah, you've given them your face. Yeah, you've given them the face. Good girl. Okay, you can get down. You can get down. Okay. Yeah, now you want a nipple. No nipples allowed. Yeah, no nipples allowed. Good girl. Good girl. Hi, face. Good girl, Kitty. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. Ah, oh, dearie me. What a day. Oh, yeah, she has very white teeth. She chews a lot. She, she chews many things, and so her teeth are very, very white. Plus, she's a baby. We all have white teeth as babies. Oh, boy, oh, boy. What a day. What a day. It's Friday, thank God. I feel like last weekend, since we had the class, I just did not get a weekend. I'm really looking forward to having a weekend. Oh. Uh. Even though I have Right Club on Sunday, but that's that's fun. And and I stream on Saturday, but still, that's fun. And it's only a little bit of the day. It's not the entire day. Oh, yawn. Hi, dog father. You just missed Keekster. Whew. Alrighty. So we're going to start with our spell effect, because we're going to need to give our spell effect time to dry, um, and such like that. And uh, while we are... Doing that, we can work on the green on her base. That is my plan, and I'm sticking to it. So first, I want to paint that spell effect, and I want to do it with a pretty um, saturated, bright green. And I'm going to grab hmm, Naga green if I can. Not Cat's Eye, I want Naga. There, Naga and Dungeon Slime and maybe some uh, bright yellow as well, we'll see. So we're gonna do this with a bright green and purple scheme, so the spell energy is gonna be green. And then the skin tone will be orange and I'll probably get some brown going on to dirty up his robes as well. So we'll have the green, orange, purple color scheme on this one. David was painting his new bust and he used to have it as like a, a phoenix with like a fiery wizard and now the whole thing is completely shifted into an Anne color scheme, which is more like indigo and gold. I don't know how it how it happened, but he like totally did a 180 on it. Alrighty. I'm gonna just mix one drop of the Naga into my Dungeon Slime, and apparently that's not enough. I wanted a little greener. Um, I'm trying to get to a a green that'll still look green, if you know what I mean. So a little bit more Naga. Naga is a very yellowy green, so it's a good match for Dungeon Slime. Yeah, it's actually, that's a little bit better. All right, we'll do that. If I put my black base next to it, you'll be able to see more. It's kind of a lime. I, well, at least I thought you'd be able to see more, but apparently not. Um, it's more of a limey green. It's coming off. It's, it looks lighter on camera, but it's actually uh, not that light. Don't know how to quite show it to you unless I put a drop of Dungeon Slime right, right on its side. So you can see that it's greener than the Dungeon Slime. That's more. Yeah, that gave you more of an idea. So yeah, so let's get um, that spell effect painted. Now, one thing that I had thought about doing was doing a spell effect in his other hand, but I don't have uh, the model I need for that. So I'm just gonna run with what I've got and we'll see. Uh, da, 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 da. I want my one, but yeah. 
So we're keeping this pretty bright and we're gonna actually do like the centers, like where the things are, where things are very thick, we're gonna go much more white, but I wanna start out kind of establishing a green baseline. And I don't care if my paint is thick because I actually want irregularity in this and I'll end up sculpting more texture onto it. Though loading a ton of paint onto it is gonna mean that it dries a lot slower right now, but it is what it is. But I want this color down because then when I put the water effects over the top, the water effects will look white when they come out, but they'll go transparent as they dry. And I want that green color underneath to show through the transparency so that it looks like the core of the magic is green. And the outside should pick up a little bit of that through the transparency. And I'm gonna darken some stuff down too is it with the uh, Naga. Let's get this in focus because I think I'm not. There. Alrighty, so let's get the other side. And you can paint directly over green. You can also choose to prime it if you wish. But paint sticks pretty well to green in my experience. So we still see a little bit of the uh, brass rod a little bit through that, but that's fine. We can put another layer on it if we want. It's still a cooler spell effect than it used to be, so I'm happy. Um, I am gonna mix up some Naga and put the darker green um, at the tips of things and focus some white down here so that we have a little bit of uh, variation in our spell effect. Super glue, Twisted Oma. That's a Julie tip. Julie said put super glue. Um, I didn't I didn't do it so that the paint would stick though. I did it so that the um so that the green stuff would stick to it, Twisted Oma. So it wasn't it wasn't for the paint at all. It was for the green stuff. Alrighty, let's get some of this Naga. Naga's a pretty um, saturated color, so that's why I'm using it to get a little bit of a bright green toward the ends of some of this stuff. But yeah, the paint may have trouble sticking to the brass rod. We'll see. Um, the super glue may help it. The green stuff, you know, around it will help it a little bit. If I have a little bit of variation, I'm not concerned. Um, I can still put another layer of paint over it. looks like it is sticking and drying. Like I can see the brass through it because I didn't prime and I probably should have primed the brass parts, but, but I didn't. So then you just deal with it. Um, I want to, I do want to, I think thin this a little, but we'll see. So the thinner parts, I'm going a little bit greener. Although where everything, um, wherever something joins together, I think I'm gonna make it brighter, kind of like lightning. Let's go for that, let's go there. So I am going over that brass rod a little bit because it's a skinny little part. Get some other layer of paint on it. I 
And I will be going in and highlighting this too. I'm just trying to get some color on it and uh, experiment with what I'm looking at. Since I haven't done this before, I'm just like playing around at this point. See what kind of effect I might like. before I start throwing transparent effects over it. And then I'm gonna grab my white and start making bits of it look like glowies. Now this is something where many people would do OSL. Um, like they would have the green all reflecting onto his face and stuff. If you were gonna do that, you have to paint the rest of the model as if it's in shadow, which we could do. Um, however, green is not gonna be a great color onto the purple and skin. Like you really won't see any other colors if we were to do that, which would be a shame. So that's why I wouldn't do it. Um, I would just let it be itself. Alrighty, I want white. Now I need to put a drop of water in my Naga Green to keep it wet. Otherwise, if I just leave it in my palette with no water in it, it will dry pretty quick. It's the water that makes the difference in the well palette. So if you are trying to use a well palette, always add one drop of water because it really does help the paint stay wet. If you're going to use paint full strength and you're not thinning it at all, use your well, use your wet palette. You'll be much happier. I'm going to pop this white on here. We'll thin that down to about a 2 to 1. And we'll get our center bits figured out. And then we're gonna make sure it's dry. I'm actually, I'm just gonna do it four to one, I think, instead of two to one on my white, because I want it to be really, really bright. If something is a light source or is glowing, you must use pure white or something very, very close to pure white at the heart of it. Um, if you if you don't use pure white, you need to use pure white mixed with your, your other, like in this case, my green, my pale green. Um, don't use an off-white. It, it won't read right. Sweet, Agent Marvel. I got my yarn swift and my ball winder yesterday for my knitting. I'm excited. I won't be using it for a little while, but now at least I have one for when I need to break open the... Uh, really cool yarn. So I'm going to start putting little bits of white and this time I'm going to not just like be painting over the whole surface but I am actually going to try to hit some of the details. And I'm going to be adjusting if I find a, a part that I think is too dark or if I need to blend a little more I'm going to do that. And I'm going to try to do kind of like lines or, or swoops um, to accentuate the fact that the energy is moving. So to suggest that the energy is flowing. But I want that heart to be a lot to be pretty light. And then some of these areas. Okay. 
also. Oh yeah, that's because it's not an actual color. It was a bonus color for the rack, Tyler. Wasn't an actual bones color. Not really necessary to acquire unless you're a completionist, but it really was only, we went to stores as a bonus for ordering the rack. So I don't really consider it a bones color. It's a promo color. That's why its number is different. As I recall anyway. Yeah, those bonus colors are just, Ed wanted them. And I mean, they're okay, but they're nothing like it. When, when I got hit with a request to do some last minute crap like that, you can ass you assume that like the thought and uh, deliberation that went into my normal paint line design went out the window with those other, with the other type of things. So, although it's a nice um, grayish blue, it's not, you know, it's not a necessary part of the line or anything. It was not, um, it was not created with the bones line in mind necessarily. It was just like, I need a color because Ed wants me to do this thing. So now I'm going to try to get this color. And he wanted funny names. So, so we have morning after blues, stark naked and uh, prom night, which is totally John Overton, by the way, prom night pink is John Overton's idea. All right, so a little bit of power there. But that's why you can't find it, Tyler, is kind of where I was going with that. It's like, you, you can't find it because it's really not a bones color. It was only produced as a promo for people who ordered rack deals. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't necessarily like in the same sort of regular production as everything else. I'm going to create a couple of little kind of sparks along the length of these wires, just alternating a little bit just to give it some visual interest. Um, now we're getting to the point where I kind of like it. But yeah, so that's why it's hard to find because it wasn't really, wasn't really meant to be part of the line. It was just for rack deal stuff. I think you could still order it, but like you could back in the day still order it as just like off the reaper site, but I don't remember. So just putting little bits of magic and then we'll get back out here and I'm gonna just use my dungeon slime with Naga Green to give a little bit of variance to this area. Those, those were joke colors. Whenever you see that sort of thing where the color doesn't fit with my other um, process, it was a last minute, Ed needs a blah, we are doing a thing, um, can you please just you know pull something out of your butt kind of thing. That's totally the way it was. So... Novelty stuff like that is, uh, like it got only as much attention as it need, as I needed to get it done is pretty much where it came out. All right. And it darkens down so I can lighten it up in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because whenever we needed a promo for something, like there's a bunch of colors like that, where whenever we needed a quick promo, the quickest way to do it was for Ed to just look at me and go, can you spin something out? Because we, since we made all the paint on site, 
and it didn't require sculptor or, you know, offsite production or mold making. It was the easiest thing to do to just do a paint for promotion. So there are paints that got produced that way that were just quick and fast and didn't have a lot of my usual um, process behind them. Mostly I got frustrated with those things, but you know, it's been a long time and I'm just like, meh. But I'll be happy to tell you when they're, when it's a color that's like this, like it's where it's a joke color and it's really not necessary as far as like, um, I mean, would it be useful? Maybe you'll like the color, but you know, that's with those colors, that's what it is. It's like, they may, they are not made with my, my br normal brain utility in mind. They're just made to be colors. No, Drown Nipple Pink was totally different. I told that story a while ago, actually just a few days ago, Dog Father. Drown Nipple Pink was a joke color that came about because Ed thought he was funny putting it on my production board, so I decided to make it and, and put it out in secret at ReaperCon. But it is like Drown Nipple Pink in the fact that Drown Nipple Pink is not a necessary color. You may like it and want to use it because you like it, but it was not made to slot into anything or to work with anything in particular. It was just a color I put together. A lot of my paints have a lot more thought behind them than that. It's not just a color. It's a, how does this paint slot in with other yellow greens? How does it slot in with other purples? You know, what, what would this be a good highlight or alternate mid-tone? Or, you know, how would it work with other things? You know, what would it be useful for? Is this paint useful um, for mixing? You know, all that sort of thing. Like that, I constantly, as a paint line designer, I was always thinking of those things because I didn't want to put out a paint that wasn't useful. Like I wanted to be able, when somebody said, why would I need this color to say, you need this color because this is what you use it for. This is what you can use it for mixing. This is an alternate highlight or shadow for X, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it actually wasn't like, uh, the punny names were not my idea for those promo colors. That was just, Ed again was pulling my lead I actually don't like, I, I really don't like those colors. Like I don't, I'm not like happy with them. Like I never have been. Um, and always, it's, it's just like, I didn't like the urban legend stuff. Like the first one, the Werner, the first Sophie, that one made sense and it was funny at the time. But I was not a fan of going down that route because I felt that Reaper had positioned its brand to be family friendly. And I felt that by doing the urban legend stuff, Ed was going off brand. And I never think that going off brand is a good idea. Because you're always going to lose those people who like, you know, love your brand because they can get it for their kids and you can all paint together and then their kids run into naked, you know, stuff at the store or, you know, very, you know, not in good taste to names and things like that. And it's like, it's, that's not what I thought Reaper's brand was trending towards. So that was, that was just me. That was a disagreement between Ed and me. Ed thought there's room in the, in the brand for it. And obviously he was right because, you know, many people liked it. So it was just like, I've, I've always been like, I guess I'm more, I'm more about like, a, like having a defined brand and, and, you know, if you're going to morph it, then you need to morph it purposefully instead of just at a whim. <laughs> but you know what? It was Ed's company. So when it comes down to it, it's like, it still is, it's less Ed's and Dave's company. And I was just a MOOC. I was a pretty highly placed MOOC with a lot of freedom and, you know, the ability to make really awesome colors. Uh, but when it came down to it, the best I could do is protest and then go along. So yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there, Crowley, but now we need to do even cooler stuff with it. And I'm not sure if this is going to work. Like I said, I've never done this before. This is just something I've wanted to do for a long time. I wanted to try on a model. So I am going to get there real quick. I'm almost to the point where I can add more things, more things and stuff. And doing a little bit of stipple can help to make the magic a little bit more sparkly. All right, so I don't know how much this is gonna carry.
Yeah, that's kind of it. That's kind of it. And Urban Legend, that line was kind of that thing. Um, but it was just never something we advertised. We all just, it was the secret thing, right? It was the Urban Legend. Um, so, I mean, it worked. It, it worked, but it's just, you know. Like I said, it's, it's, if it were my brand, would we have gone different? But it wasn't my brand. It was Ed's brand. So, um, it's like, you can have ideas about things, but, you know, in the end, if you're not the one in charge. All right, so now let's play. Uh, do I want to try? I'm looking at the water, the water gel effects, and I think that they're not as thick and goopy as the water effects from Woodland Scenics. Um, if we look at them both, and we can play around with these a little bit. So let's see, where is a nice uh, something for me to work on? How about this? Yeah. So one thing I love doing with water effects, um, if you're gonna, you know, take them, set them up, and then transfer them onto a model is I will draw what I want or, or kind of put down what I want on a plastic, let, let the thing cure or partial cure, and then I'll manipulate it and stick it to the model. I'm not gonna do that this time, but I can use this plastic to um, kind of experiment and see what the water gel effects really can do here. I am gonna switch to a synthetic brush. Well, right, right, but that is the brand, right? Yeah, yeah, Tyler, exactly. So, yeah, it. I just don't. I won't use the um, solvent-based stuff from AK. Um, but since they had, since we were at a game castle and Seth loves AK, um, they had a ton. So the th if you look at this stuff, it's goopy, but when I when I leave it go, see how that little trail just goes right back into the mass. So it does have some self-leveling characteristic characteristics. You could make icicles out of this. So if you want to make an icicle, glob, glob. And again, this isn't the best icicle because it's not holding its globulants, um, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But this is how, this is how you make an icicle, guys. You take a water effects. I'm interested to see also if this evaporates a bit and changes shape. You make it pretty thick up top because you need to be able to peel it off. And you taper it. And then when you are, um, when you let it set, you peel it off. And then you, if you want to, you can flip it over and do a little bit of this on the back to make sure it doesn't have a flat side. Um, and then I would usually, I would do a little bit of extra at the top so that I could just slice off the top with a knife. And that would make it uh, flat so I could glue it onto things. So you could do, that's, that's how you make, um, make icicles with water effects. So I'll leave my icicle there, but I'm gonna grab the actual Woodland Scenics effects and show you why it's a little bit better. Now, if you, so what I come down to here then is that the water gel effects definitely need to be done, like you need an armature, I think, is what I'm coming down to um, for these, whereas with uh, the Woodland Scenics, you do not need, let's see, see how this stuff is going, all right. I'm gonna do a blob of it if I can and work with it. Hopefully I can get this squeeze out. This is so old. Old and goopy, but that's okay. Actually, I want it old and goopy. So this is old, old, old and goopy. You can see it curling around and being all silly. I'm just gonna squeeze it out. But look at that, look at how that peak just squeezes out and stays there. That's what we want, people. That is what we want. I'm gonna start storing this upside down. I might think about adding some fluid to it. So you are gonna go back here, water effects. Go and sit in, uh, in here, there. Okay, so this is great. Perfect. Yep, yep. But the great thing about this stuff is we can take it and use it to make even more effects. And when this dries, it'll be transparent. So we can take it and zoop it around. And just play with it, essentially to make even more effects that are, we can pull, put them off of the top of these little guys. 
This is real thick, so if it were a little bit thinner, it would be a little smoother, but I can use water to smooth it. But I can sit, I can, I can get like very small, wispy magic off of this. And it's flexible. So it's essentially, I'm going to actually add some water to this and see what I can do. Okay, water effects. Let's get you a little, let's get a little water in you. So you get a little bit more flexible and you don't dry on this surface. Just using my synthetic brush to get my water effects a little bit goopier. But the reason I love this water effect stuff is it's so stiff. And so you can use it in ways you can't use that other stuff. You can use it more like the modeling gels from Liquitex. But the modeling gels from Liquitex, I don't know if I actually have a transparent one of that. I could have to go look. They dry clear. PVA doesn't dry perfectly clear in my experience, but yes. Yes, exactly. But the modeling paste needs to be a clear modeling paste. Like I, most of the Liquitex modeling pastes are, um, they're white, right? Because they have, um, they have like, uh, ground up stuff in them. But this is where we can, we can take things and I can, I can take this, um, the wire that I didn't do anything with before and I can grab some of this and make it more interesting, right? I may have thinned it too much. We'll see if I did, if I did thin it too much, I'll just get more, but now I can build up more of this. So yeah, if, if, if it had gone up, if I'd left it a little thicker, I would have be able to do more of the little wispy things. There we go. So mostly I'm following um, kind of what I did, but I want to, I'm trying to give it a little bit more definition and little tiny breaks and peaks so that it looks crackling. That's what I want from this. And I can use it to make my wires a little bit globbier, um, more thick. And to fill in places where I feel like my putty work um, didn't uh, didn't work as well as I wanted it to. I'm gonna stir this up a bit. As the water evaporates, it should stiffen. But I wanna stir it up nicely. But yeah, modeling paste would be fine for this if you didn't want to get a transparent effect. I want a transparent effect, so that's what I'm that's why I'm going for this. And I can go up here. It'll also make it shiny. Yeah, I thinned it a little bit too much, so I'm not getting the peaks that I want off of it. So I'm gonna actually grab some of my thicker stuff. Because you can see where that, the first ones really trailed off to be like real thin and interesting and kind of feathery. So I want to get more of the thick one. I want, I want really stuff, thick stuff. I kind of want it between where I had it. Pardon me while I squeeze more out. This is just so old. So old that it's gone all goopy. But yeah, essentially I want to just sculpt with this. Uh, essentially I'm using it to make really small, really thin, feathery um, stuff. I want to see if I can like if I can do a tiny little peak, a wispy peak bit of power like that. And then maybe do a little bit more here. And the great thing is, if I really want to, I can paint, I can paint this stuff too. So that's nice, actually. I like that. I, way that, I like the way that it looks in the end now. And it's not going to be terribly fragile because it's very plasticky when it sets up. Uh, it's very kind of flexible. And I can keep negative space, like I can get that there. So now it's almost looking like fire at the end. I like that. 
So you can do that sort of effect with this. I probably actually want to, instead of the brush at this point, I think I want, but yeah, and it'll take this a while to dry. I think I want a poker. Like it'll take it a while to set up, but look at how cool, like you can get a really kind of flamey effect, right? And you want to make sure that's all going in the right direction. You have just a little bit of time to play with it before it really starts to set up when it's this thick. And it may be that you mess it up and then you're like, oh, okay, well, now I get back to the drawing board and that's fine. Um, I can make a little bit more of a point on this out here. Then you just pull it off and you just start again. So that's like a fiery, flamey arrow now. I like that. That's cool. It's got some really fine bits to it. And those fine bits are going to cure first. As your putty, as this stuff sets up, it gets more goopy. And uh, you can do some more interesting things with it. I want to get some of these uh, bits coming out to the side a little. And uh, as, since we're dealing with uh, putting over the top of, of established detail, it will kind of like fog that detail, which is good. That's why I didn't spend a lot of time sculpting the spell effect under here is I knew I was going to do this and I knew it was going to obscure um, areas. Decided I didn't want that one there. But I do want one up here. And technically, if I find any areas or any one of these that I don't like, I could just snip it off um, after everything is dried and cured. Um, if you added in, it, I don't think it would work, Twisted Oma. This, if you want to add a uh, color to a water effect, you need to be using a different product. Um, you need to be using the transparent water gel, or they actually have a, um, a, uh, they have a, a light blue one and I think a dark green one for swamp water. But when you want the stiffness that allows you to actually sculpt with this stuff, if you add any fluid colorant to it, it's just going to break down just like my first batch that I added water to here. So that's why you underpaint instead. So that when this dries, I've got the green showing through it a bit. I mean, you can continue manipulating it now. You can see that this one is really started to clear out. Like, as far as I wouldn't manipulate it past this point, like, I think here is where it's set. Like, I'm, I've got that particular wave there now, and I can't alter it. I can add to it, but I can't alter it. So at that point, if you didn't like this, you just have to snip it off. But I can continue to build it up if I want to and to attach it maybe to other parts by, once it's stiff, I can work off of it. So I can continue. This is what I did on water effects with Spirit Beast, if you guys remember, is I just continued to build up and add to this. So it's not like it's done. I mean, yeah, that particular piece is cured, but if I wanna do this add where I kind of bring it in and try to connect it to something else, I can. Although my, my established goop is now getting pretty stiff, so. And again, this is pretty old. I don't work with it a lot because I haven't done a lot of scenic display bases or spell effect stuff. Once I've got a piece, although if you do have a piece that you like, you can always just stick it on there. Well, I don't know. I don't, that's not done going in the right direction though. So I think I'm going to pull that off. But like right now, I could make this into frothy wave tops. I could, because it's starting to dry, so I could essentially put it down there, let the base of it start to set, and then I could start pulling pieces up and off to make a frothy wave top. And that's the that's the brilliance of this stuff. Is it's just you can as long as you're patient and you learn kind of how to stretch it and pull with it, you can make some really cool effects with it. You know, maybe I need to re-add that down here, re-anchor it and pull it up. But I could like, I could essentially curve. You can see the curve of that. 
so I can make a, a foamy or, or like a splash effect or something like that. All of those things are possible with this stuff. Anything you want. But like I can make like kind of that spiky, splashy effect too. Um, it will leave layer lines behind, but can you see them? I mean, if I'm working with a spell effect where it's all going to be transparent, um, I don't care. I, I want it to be rough. So, but it, it won't self-level. That's the thing is it will not self-level. So you're still going to have rough parts. And if you want to smooth them out, then you'd probably want to come back with like this, or we could use the water gel. And we could essentially brush the water gel over all of these uh, rough parts and we could smooth it out. Yeah, you could create a campfire with it. Or at least you could create the shapes. But yeah, so let's see here. The stuff I add water to is now stiffening up a bit. I can pull off a long trail and not have it self-level. So thinning it with water and then giving giving you a little bit more working time. Not a bad idea. I kind of want... It takes patience and it doesn't always work exactly the way you want it, but I, here I just wanted to... Um, to give it a little bit more like those little projections and flames and wisps that would be very hard to do in green or impossible um but i can do it with this and because it's magic it's energy it works But yeah, some of this is already set. I can re if it's a real thin strand, I can try to reposition it, but it's going to hold shape. Um, so if I decide I didn't like the way that this uh, this one curved inward, I'm kind of stuck with it at this point. My best uh, option is probably to join it to this, so that I've got more negative space on my spell effect. All right, so now we're back over to this one. Don't want to do too much else. Um, I do want to build up kind of a wisp coming out to the side a little bit. So like that. So I've got that. That's perfect. Um, I do want to pop maybe a little bit down here onto the bottom just to give it a little bit more of a tail. Got to be careful with my shapes. I don't want to mess up my really fine shapes that I tried to get. I can put a little bit of uh, the goo over the top. If I'm trying to disguise like roughly sculpted texture, I can just like put some uh, some energy over it to make a join. And I can paint this if I want to. I was using a synthetic brush and now I'm using a metal pointer. Yeah, it got um, powdered pigment is, I mean, I don't, I don't think I'd want to color it. I mean, I don't, powdered pigment is usually well, hazardous and not, it's opaque. That's the problem with pigments, a Valandar, is that you're, okay, you'll color it, but you're going to lose the clearness. So it depends on how much of this you want for clearness. Like if you really want, you probably, if you don't want clearness, I would just use a Liquitex, one of the Liquitex gels, the flexible sculpting gels, um, and flexible sculpting paste. And those are made to have uh, pigments put into them. Like they, they say that you can add paint or whatever to them to color them. Um, but they're not transparent. So it's like you ask yourself what you want. Why are you using these mediums? If you want a color, then I would use the flexible modeling paste and add, add pigment since it's more made for that. But yeah, this stuff will definitely like log up your brushes. So I... Uh, I gave, once it got to a certain point of thickness, it was actually more effective for me to sculpt with the needle. Yeah, the set, the one where I put um, water in it is now at a perfect rate, perfect point to, uh, to leave the artifacts, the peaks and the shapes that I want. 
So it only set it back a little bit. If you do want to pull out a long tail, you have to use quite a bit of it. I'll try to make more of a tip on this. There we go. That's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. I want to see if I can make a big loop here. It's not quite stiff enough. Almost. That's pretty cool though. So yeah, if you add opacity to it, then you'll be able to see these shapes better. I was just looking for like more like kind of subtle shapey things going on here. It's drying slowly. I like the kind of flaming arrow look that I've got kind of got on this here. So yeah, I could uh, I could paint again over the top of this to bring back opacity. And it's again, it's it's what your goal is. What are you trying to do? For me, I'm just mucking around. I can do whatever I want. Um, yes, yeah, so you could absolutely glaze. Yeah, yeah, the solvent, the weird base Tamiya clears. Yeah, yeah, those would be fine for tinting this. Yep. Now I need to wait and see how clear this stuff actually is once it fully cures. I do like how it looks. It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. But some of its parts may end up being almost invisible once it's, uh, once it's cured, which will be interesting. Interesting. And it's shiny. That's another thing is it's going to add a shiny factor. But I kind of like the shiny factor, so... I'm just going to pop a little bit more on. <laughs> Maybe not so much there. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that one, so I'll just pull it off. Um, you can see how this stuff is setting up now. It still has a little bit of goo at the center, but when it's partially dried, you can play with it a lot. Um, make wispy, wispy shapes, cool wispy shapes. Yeah. Oh, well, obviously. Okay. Don't eat anything. Do not brush lick. Do not do the thing. Do not put that stuff in your mouth. It's not food grade. Yes, exactly. See this, and you could do that with this gel tip. This would be your, your white dragon freezy effect. Absolutely. It would be a lot of work, but you could do it. Yeah, but I can keep mucking, mucking around with my, uh, my half cured shapes to try to make them spikier or funky. Um, you're going to wreck some of it inevitably and get it to a thing where you really can't use it, but that's all part of the learning process. But you could do like puddles of, of ice, you know, from this. It's pretty cool, but you can see how the seafoam effect is very much possible with this. So yeah, I feel like this is one of the most underrated mediums in miniatures. Um, I feel like, like especially for spell effects and, and other like, like a pure special effects stuff, um, I feel like it's, uh, it is so very interesting. And sure, it's a pain to use, but you can get so much interesting stuff from it. I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. And I'm just gonna let it kind of go to see how it ends up looking and if I like it or not. I think it's infinitely cooler than what was there before. The downside to this stuff is that you aren't going to be precise with it. Like you, you've got to kind of freestyle it and you've got to kind of go with what you see and, 
and then you're stuck with it. Um, but I still like it. So, all right, I'm gonna put him aside and let him set up a bit now that I think I'm done with it. But yeah, so now the stuff that I originally brought out and mixed water with is, is actually added good consistency to do peaks with. Not quite as, as stiff of peaks as the, as the you know really set up stuff. So the thicker you let it get, the more you're gonna be able to pull it out into things like that. But yeah, so lots of ways to manipulate it. Cool stuff you can do um, once it starts to set up, obviously making forms. You can make a bunch of crumbles, texture. Um, I mean, I'd use thick paint, daffod wear. It is shiny, so it is a, a smooth surface. But again, if you were going to do that, I would use the flexible sculpting paste from Liquitex, which is opaque and meant to be, that's what it's meant to do. Flexible modeling paste, acrylic mediums from Liquitex. It's white, it does not dry clear, but it is the goopy consistency. You can create peaks with it. If you let it set up a little bit, you'll be able to create more peaks with it. But this stuff is meant to have colors mixed into it. It's meant to, you know, so I've got a little bit of peak action going on there, just straight out of the bottle. I do keep putting water into this so that it doesn't dry out. Um, but there are even, like, I think it's the heavy, but there are, there are different ones of these modeling mediums. Um, and one of them does definitely do the, like, real stiff peaks thing. And you can paint over it. But it is not clear. It does not dry clear. It dries white. And you can see it's not quite as stiff, this particular one, the model of flexible modeling paste, is not quite as stiff as the Woodland Scenics. But if I leave it to set up, then I'll begin to be able to do stuff like that, see? So that's this is just like green in that way, where when you first get it out, it's gonna have limitations. But if you wait and let it get just a little bit more evaporated, just a little bit more stiff, you can work it with longer, thinner hooks and lines and it won't collapse back on itself as much because it's starting to set up, it's starting to dry. So it's just playing with these mediums, right? You just play with them and figure out, what can I do with this, you know? If, I, if you have an idea, um, you know, this is meant to produce textures and little tiny details on the surface of canvases, but you absolutely can use it for other things. So I have a whole bunch of them. But yeah, so all this stuff I feel like people kind of just don't play with, um, with spell effects and things like they could. Uh, I feel like that this is all very, has very high possibility as far as creating like ground spell effects and fire and, um, and you know, energy in general. If you want to create like little wispy, cool, transparent stuff, it, uh, it really, I feel like it, it can be fun. It can be fun. And you can do like water spouts with it and things like that. That's what it's really meant to do is water effects. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to play with. So since you guys are, you know, since I'm here on the stream, I may as well get to play and learn about things. And if I decide I don't like my spell effect, although I do, it's, it's so infinitely better already than the spell effect from uh, the box, out of the box, right? Although it is translucent, so to get it, I have to like show you that. It is pretty cool though. I like it. Rawr. Um, cool. All right, so let's do some green, green stuff. But yeah, so this is cool stuff. It's cool, it's fun to play with. It's very creative. Very, very creative. Just because, because it encourages you to play. Any product that just encourages you to play and not obsess and just like explore what you can do 
Like that's that's an awesome product. I'm just gonna keep my paint a little wet because I may want to do some touch-ups or glazes later. There. All right. I don't know if I'm gonna paint over it um, though, Big Chimpo. Like I will probably add just a little bit to bring out these details that you otherwise don't see unless you put it over a dark backdrop. But I want the transparency. Like I want, I want some of the see-through stuff. So I may accentuate the arrowhead at the end, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna paint over it solidly. I don't want to, that's not the point. Otherwise I would've used modeling paste or I would've used something else. I want the transparency. Like sometimes you just want the special effect. But I can add tiny touches of paint to it, still keep most of its transparency and still bring out the little details. That's the goal. All right, let me put my Liquitex goo back away here. Ooh, stay, there we go. But yeah, it's not necessarily to paint everything all the time if you're doing an effect like this. Like when I did the water, the, the water foam spray for uh, the Spirit Beast, I did not paint it. I just left it transparent because it was, there was, it was interesting enough that it would catch the light and it wouldn't have looked right to not have a bit of that transparency left. But yeah, could you paint it? You could, sure. I just maybe would have used something else then. All right, I need green stuff. Yeah, but then you'd lose all the other colors in the piece because green OSL is one of those things that tends to just take over because like green over purple is going to turn it to gray. Like, and green over the face is going to completely wash out the red of the face and turn it to a light gray. And then the beard will be green. And we'll have nothing else going on. It's the paint gun effect is what David calls it. Um, I could paint the rest of the model in like twilight maybe and do a little bit of a green flare, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Not, not sold on it. It's different, Big Chimpo, when your, uh, your husband, uh, partner, significant other is a top level painter with OSL. <laughs> At which point you know that if you do the paint gun effect, you are going to make him just like shrivel up and like, you know, emit a high pitched squeak noise and then promptly, you know, have to deal with him haranguing you about why you would do such a terrible thing to a model. <laughs> and now it bothers me because now I understand why it's not correct necessarily. Or if it is correct, why it will just, like, you may as well just paint the whole mini green, black, and white at that point with just a little bit of variation here and there. Um, now that I understand it, I understand light a lot better. I'm just like, I don't even want to do that. To me, that ruins the figure. Like, the best OSL is like Mouseling where you're picking a color that you can at least use to illuminate the different colors on the model. If that torch was green, his fur would be gray. His ear would be gray. Like it all just be shades of like greenish gray and then a brighter green on the green cloth and on the white. And it just, it's not fun. Like, so that's why you should always think about what color your, what your OSL is. I mean, the, the, the best way to do OSL on that figure would be to put him kind of in an evening light where you can still do colors on everything else and then just have the light source here not be super bright, but just a little bit, just a little bit. Then you're only like compromising a little bit of the model and you still get to paint the rest of the model more or less normally, although dim. But you know you could force OSL on that and then a bunch of your friends would just love it, right? Because they don't get, you know, they're just going to look at OSL and go OSL. So, it, again, what's your goal? 
my goal these days, because lighting does not come naturally to me, is to do correct lighting if I'm going to do lighting on a piece, uh, whether it's OSL or a strong frontal light or top down light or whatever. Um, and that is so that I don't mess up my, like I'm trying to develop an instinct for it, right? I'm trying to internalize it and, um, and get to the point where, where I, I don't have to think about it as much. I know how it should look. In order to do that, I need to continually do it well. Yeah, it's very green with lots of dark colors because that's the way green light acts on things. Yeah. And that's not my idea of fun. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the same problem comes up with blue light, which tends to completely wash out skin tones and also um, makes red turn black or dark gray. Um, you, you're always going to lose. That's why um, underwater fish down near the, you know, deep, deep ocean, like when you put a regular light on them, suddenly they've got a lot of reds in them. But otherwise, they like, they look like shadows because the blue light is the only light that's filtering down that far and red under blue light looks black. So it hides them until you put an actual spotlight on them and then they're the brightest red things you'll ever see. Yeah, I don't think I even have squad green. All right, we've got some green stuff. Speaking of green, stuff of green. So one way if you want to thin thin your green out is you can put it between two sheets of plastic. In this case, I am just using my Ziploc bag here. And I could use a roller, but I don't have a roller, so I'm going to use a knife with a flat end. And I can just flatten it out between these two things. This is how you can do cloth too. Some people use a pasta roller uh, if they're doing a long sheet. Ah, the cracking ink. Oh, except that, there we go. So it stuck a little bit. I didn't put water on it. I was silly, uh, but I can fix that. Put water on it. Grab my Sculpty tools. Hello, Sculpty tools. Where are you? Did I put them in the other room or did I just not take them out of my bag? Hmm. No, I may have put them in the other room. They're obviously not back in my bag. This is foolish. Well, I've got my big tampy thing anyway. <laughs> yeah, I need to go find where I stuffed my um, my sculpting tools. I may have stuffed them in my other room. But as it is, I can work with these on stonework. It'll be fine. <laughs> cool gel tip. Now, if you let it set up, it won't catch on the plastic. Like if I let it stiffen up a little bit, but. Do have some water on both sides of this, so I'm gonna kind of dry it off on one side. Then I'm gonna pop it in here. Oh, I've got a kiki hair. Yeah, I think I left my sculpting tools in the other, the other room, our other hobby room. Nice thing about doing big flagstones is that, you know, when you have to stop and start again, you can just make a whole new stone and uh, it works.
or you can just make it crack in the stone you were working on. Any spade tool or spoon tool can be used to kind of like crimp down an edge around this. I'm just going to continue to press this down and uh, press it around. I have quite a bit of green here and I can definitely stretch it. You can keep it from crimping up around the feet of the model. So I want a little bit more of this. I've got the rest of my little sheets sitting over here on my plastic wrap. Uh-oh, a little bit too much water on everything. That's all right. I can make it work. I have to call a plumber after stream because our sink is clogged. It's very annoying. We don't have a garbage disposal because of this old house. Nobody ever put one in. And I think because it's because the under sink area is so small that previous uh, owners just didn't want to give up their, uh, their under sink storage to put in a, a disposal. But we tried hard. We tried very, uh, very meticulously and prolonged period of time to unclog it last night and it did not unclog. <sighs> sigh. So I must do, I must call around today. Let's see if I can get somebody in here by next week, Monday. So I'm playing around with rock shapes here. And since I left my, my sculpting tools in the, uh, my other sculpting tools in the other room, I'm using kind of tools that I don't normally use, but you can really, one of these spade tools, this, this tool, I mean, they're just so useful. You do a lot with them when it comes to stonework. So you have a cutting edge and you have, um, you know, a tip to etch with and cut with, and you have, uh, the long edge to indent and it's good stuff. But yeah, I'll probably have to go in and see if I can find my sculpting tools because the stamp that I was using for stone texture is in there. Eh. We could also make these overlap a little bit. And if I need to flatten out, I can use my big giganto spoon to help me flatten out shapes. The tip is sharp enough on this particular tool to still do cracks and things. The other thing I really like about these little spade tools is it's really easy to like make little depressions, like kind of like slate, the way that slate has layers, but make that kind of like little piece of rock that's a little bit flaked off there. It's very easy to do that with these tools. And I want to continue with, uh, yeah, I think I'll put a break there. So she's got bigger stones and then smaller stones.
It's much easier to work on this now where half of it is, is set, so I don't have to worry about fingerprinting as I'm working around the other side. You can kind of use the edge to dig this edge under a bit of this stone right here. So we can press it out and it'll have a lip that overhangs the edge of the base, which is nice. little bun there, a little, little stone. Let me keep that little edge broken. Yeah, I like to sculpt stones. They're fun. They're fun. They're good practice because you can make smooth areas, rough areas. <clears throat> you can use texture stamps. You can use all different shapes of tools. Um, you can smooth if you want to practice your smoothing. All that kind of thing. So doing base work is actually a great way to practice your green, green skills. I'm going to run in the other room real quick to see if I can locate my tools really fast so that I can uh, do this, the texture stamp on these stones. If not, I'll find something else. One second. They've got to be around here somewhere. I probably just put something on top of them and they will show up when they're ready, but they're around. Yeah, I just don't know. Hmm. I must have been using them for something, but I don't, I don't think I brought them to class. I'm a little alarmed because that was Tiny Spoon and them were in there. So if I lost all my best sculpting tools, I'm going to be kind of pissed. But I can't see how I would have because I never took them out of my box when I was in class if I brought them. Oh, well, it is what it is. <sighs> I probably just misplaced them somewhere, knowing me. So instead, I'm going to use the tip of this tool to do some little stippling to create the texture. We'll go old school, old school. We're going to keep it kind of irregular so that it mimics what we were doing on the front here. You just want to roughen it up, not leave it smooth. Make it pitted and rough so that it really looks like stone. Um, probably not to Stoma. I don't know. He has a Julie set too, I think. I'm not going to worry about it right now. If I lost it, I lost it, and there's nothing I can do about it. And if I didn't lose it, if it's here somewhere, I'll find it. So I am not one to sit and worry about spilt milk. It used to be, but I've been trying to cure myself of that. And sometimes if you lose something, you've just lost it, and that's the way you deal. You just figure out how to do it a different way. So I'm using just the, t the tip at an angle. And I'm just kind of tapping it all over the surface and like trying to keep it kind of random how I do it. 
like not really paying attention to where I'm putting it. And that will help to create the texture I want. Texture stamp is better, but it's much easier, it's much faster. But sometimes you just don't have that. Doing a little bit of pressing so that I can get that rough texture. Then I kind of looking at it, I can make some grass coming up right next to her foot there and there. Got a little bit mucky back here. Uh oh. And I can get a bit more like grass and stuff around there. Kind of make sure that I've got my shapes all together. And if there's green kind of climbing up the boot, then I need to tamp that down. Put a lot of water on there, but it's pretty smooth. So that looks pretty good. We have we have a I could use a little bit more back right here. all sorts of stuff any fun plans for the weekend for you guys kind of stretching out a little piece and uh, cutting it off of my thumbnail to put in that last area all around the edge here. But I don't need that much, so I'm gonna... Oh, nice, nice spots. Ooh, green curry, num, 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 num. I wanna do some knitting. And I will be streaming tomorrow. I haven't decided uh, what model. Maybe go back to Anubis. Maybe work a little bit more on the little bust. I've got that kind of positioned in there now. It can become a rock. Yep, have fun, Carly. Yeah, that's kind of was why we held off buying a printer. And I think that even now the fiddling with it is what is keeping David from putting time into it. Which probably means I'm the one who's going to end up putting time into it. You can look at it from the top and it's pretty round. Making a little bit of a crumbled stone here with a couple of small stones. Uh, 
How is my spell effect coming out? It is slowly transparenting. You can still see it. It's getting more and more invisible, more and more like just suggestions of wispy energy. So I will let it fully cure and then I will probably bring just a little bit of green. We can try doing that now. Let me just finish up this little rock. Putting a little texture on. And then pop that out. Okay. Oh, I know where I put my tools. I put them into my modeling tools, Caddy. Because I'm like, wait, they would have been with my brushes. And I'm like, oh, where are my brushes? And I'm like, oh, it's my modeling tools, Caddy. Da, da, da. Well, at least I can get my texture stamp. I knew it was around. It wouldn't have just like migrated out of my area. Yeah, printers be like that. So now we'll use our little back side of this and we'll add texture. Back on the green stuff here. Just a little bit of roughening texture. Yeah, there we go, much better. Okay, that's what I want. It was more that I needed to put them in something so they wouldn't get lost in my big bag that I took to the class, Richard. So it made sense to put them into the place with my brushes because down here they live in the drawer with my brushes. So all I had to do was remember that, hey, they live with my brushes and my brushes are here. That's why I wasn't panicking. Like, it's just, no, there's no point. There's no point in being, being silly about it. All right, so let's see here. Let's grab some of our dungeon slime or maybe some of our Naga green. So if I'm going to, I can try to brush a little bit of color over this. We'll see if it takes or if it doesn't. It'll take a little bit. I might be able to preserve a little bit of the transparency. I'm using pretty thin paint at this point. But that at least makes it show up. So I just do a little bit of white toward the end. So I don't want to wipe out a lot of my transparency, so I want to be a little careful here. So yeah, the paint's going over it just fine, even thinned. So, um, I mean, even clear paints are opaque, somewhat gel tip. The only true transparent medium is inks and not the acrylic inks like De La Rowney. Uh, those have coverage. But can you thin the paint to the point where it is somewhat translucent and then use it and then keep some of your translucency? Yeah, you can. That's what I did right here. You can see the arrow now, but you can also like still see through it and still see shiny bits. It just gives it a little bit of visual presence so that you can see it. It does like wipe out a lot of the transparency, but you know what? That's okay. And I can paint over the top should I wish. Mostly I'm gonna be bringing in white near the hand. Where I want it to be brighter. Okay. 
So the lighter it gets close to his hand, the brighter it's going to look there. <laughs> you won, Spendrake. Yeah, it could be worse, Twisted Oma. One kind of cool thing that you can do with this is if you do that, if you like do the white tips or something really opaque at the edge ends of your little um, strands of transparency, it can look neat just because then you've got kind of transparent uh, leading to opaque. So it looks like the far edge is a little bit more solid. So now we can see the edge there. Pendrake needs to know what to do now that he won something, my guess is. The I won something command. No, it's giveaways at reapermini.com to email. Look like C. How this is invisible and you've just got those little flecks of, of energy coming off of it. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, you have to actually email. You can't just type a command into chat and to claim a reward. You have to actually email. So yeah, I saw a lot of that translucent energy up here. So that's cool, transparent. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. It's definitely a lot more magical punch coming out of that magic effect than in the beginning one. Awesome. So we finished our stonework on uh, our necromancer and we have our spell effect set on this guy. Now we can start painting the rest of him. Thinking about doing it and doing him in Kraken ink uh, and maybe night sky indigo for this cloth. And then I'm thinking about the rest of them.
That would be like the the stereotype big chimpo. But I'm still I'm kind of like tossing stuff around in my head whether I want to do that or not. Yep, the magic is green, Pendrake. That's a, this has uh, been a purple and green project from the beginning. So the robes will be purple, purple and indigo, I think. And then I'll think about what else I want to do. And I was always intending to make the magic green. But yeah, I mean, pale flesh and white hair. If you're gonna, especially if you're gonna do any lighting effect, is probably the choice. It's just, eh, I'm just thinking about it. Might give him a little bit more color than that. We'll see. All right, peeps. I think we are to the end of the stream. It is time. Yeah, I might, I might bring a little bit more color into his face and stuff. He doesn't have to be like totally like sickly ancient guy if he doesn't want to be. So we'll see. Maybe I'll give him a brown beard. Uh, maybe I'll make him a brunette instead. Well, we did that already with Mr. Rat Wizard with the black beard going, going gray. So I think I want to do something else. Doing graying stuff is hard at 28 because you don't have a lot of room to show the uh, graying hair is, is actually can be pretty like it, it can look just weird and skunk skunk striped if you do it on 28 because you don't have a lot of room to execute the strands. Um, but I think that one's the one that I'm happiest with the one that I just showed. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to make him have a graying beard or what. I mean, the fact that he actually does have a hairline would argue that I could make him, you know, not old. So I might give him uh, a brunette. We might do brown hair. I feel like I could do a little bit of adjustment here. Yep. Okie dokie. Yeah, thanks everybody. Um, on Monday, we are back to <laughs> measling. It's measling time. Measling. Measling. Giant measling. That's what we're back to. But yeah, uh, I will be on tomorrow. I will be on my normal stream and we'll either be working on Anubis or Bust. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, hope to see some of you there. I'm tired and I just want to sleep. I want it to be the weekend. Oh, but I have to take Kiki for a walk, which is the opposite of napping. <laughs> Thank you for all my socials, everybody. Yep, yep, yep. I have a Patreon. It's cool. I'm about to start working on my paint along videos for it for this month and yeah. Thanks everybody. And yes, I will, I will hope to see you guys tomorrow. And if not, I'll see you Monday. Have a great one. Have a great weekend. Okay. Bye.